Dave, TDRS M is the last in a series of satellites. But before we talk about that, can we talk a little bit about what TDRS M actually is for the system? Sure. So TDRS M, as I think you're aware, is a communications satellite and it basically is part of the critical lifeline for end-to-end -end space communications, part of NASA's portfolio that provides service to our orbiting astronauts on the space station, as well as provides a means for scientific missions to relay their science data for discovery to missions here and here on Earth for scientists to use, analyze, and uh, you know, put together. The Hubble Space Telescope being one prime example of a mission here at Goddard that uses TDRS. So the M mission itself is to provide you know, one additional spacecraft, you know, of a constellation to continue serving in that purpose for the operations element of TDRS, which is the space network. Because this is a series of satellites, is this a redundancy or does it actually bring added benefit to the overall system? I wouldn't characterize it as redundancy. What I would characterize it as is continuation. The program was even developed to basically provide replenishment satellites to continue the operations of the existing fleet. You know, the spacecraft have limited lifetimes, although, you know, they've exceeded their design lifetimes by far. But they do have a finite life, and we have ended up needing to deorbit at least two spacecraft currently. But as the spacecraft age, there's a need for users to continue receiving science and for the astronauts to continue to provide voice and data back to Earth. And so these spacecraft basically allow the network and the constellation to continue providing that service. Tedris M will continue uh, this current system's life for how long? So each spacecraft has an approximate life, or at least on paper, of, of 15 years. So into the mid-2020s is what the current projections are. That is subject to you know, change, and it gets evaluated and updated on a, kind of on a yearly basis based on any failures and experiences that we're seeing in, in terms of performance of the existing fleet. So, so how does that work for a mission uh, now? What kind of communication systems do they use to be part of this network? Typically, a space spacecraft will have a transponder where it needs to kind of relay or provide either direct to ground, which it can be done using the near-Earth network today, where it will relay its data that it collects on board as a result of collecting science from whatever sources that it is, whether it's a sun-observing mission or something else. And it needs to find a way to get that data off the spacecraft down to the users here on Earth. It can go direct to ground antenna, or in the case of TDRS, a lot of them will uplink their data from a transponder that they fly on their spacecraft to the TDRS, and then it can basically be provided through TDRS as a relay down to the ground. You know, on the other side, it may be that the controllers on the ground want to command their satellite and to tell it to change its orbit or to change the science that it's looking to get, and they can send commands through TDRS in the other direction. TDRS will then relay those commands to their mission such that their spacecraft will then operate on that data you know, to continue, continue that mission. Nice, and it's funny because we don't often think of both ways of communicating. We think we like to get the data, but that's a good point. If we need to make corrections or we need to communicate information back to the spacecraft, vital to have this kind of network. Right, it's, it, it's not a simplex, it's duplex, right? <laughs> yeah. you, you've, you've got it going both directions, right. that's correct. 